but we're all looking forward to getting out and traveling more. Who better to talk to about that than our next guest, Campbell Wilson, the CEO of Scoot Airlines. Campbell, good morning. Welcome to Money FM Weekend Mornings, Saturday mornings with Glenn and Neil. Good morning, gents. Great to have you with us. I see you're flying the colors, literally, of your airline on your uh, on your personage today. Those of you on Facebook Live can see the yellow and black uh, shirt that Campbell has on. It's great. <laughs> now, Campbell, I wanted to say um, I, I attended your seminar, which I thought was fantastic, and I said to Claire, we must have you on the show because you had some fascinating insight about where you think the travel industry, particularly flying, is going in 2022. So let's start there. I mean, crystal ball time. What are your general projections for 2022 for Scoot, obviously, but more broadly for Singaporean travel? Well, in my perspective, clearly it's a year of recovery. Uh, we've been in somewhat of a hibernation for the last two years, but uh, as, as you've just mentioned, there's VTLs opening up. Uh, Scoot has reinstated about 40 of our previous 71 destinations, about 40% of our pre-COVID capacity. Uh, and we have some expectation that things will continue to liberalize as we move towards the endemic treatment of this disease with a vaccinated boosted population. Uh, from what we see in other parts of the world, US, Brazil, uh, other, other places, domestic travel has boomed when restrictions on travel have been lifted, uh, to the extent that in some places domestic travel is greater than it was pre-pandemic. So I've got quite high expectations that when the artificial constraints to travel are lifted uh, within Asia particularly, we'll see a similar boom. And so I'm quite excited about the prospects for 2022. All right. We're talking with Campbell Wilson, the CEO of Scoot. And Campbell, uh, we've seen that uh, Australia is has opened up quite quickly uh, in this last couple of weeks. Um, Singapore, we're starting to move in that direction. Then we've had a little bit of a hiccup here last week. Uh, the, some of those opening measures are going to be delayed. Although the, the new VTL with the, the Saudi Arabia and the UAE is a, is a good sign as well. Where are you seeing the, uh, the immediate opportunities for Scoot in terms of where your customers are wanting to go? Where are they starting to book tickets to? Well, you, you mentioned Australia. Uh, all of our five cities in Australia are now covered under VTL. Uh, I had the pleasure of taking the first flight into the Gold Coast for more than two years uh, last week. Nice. And it was just wonderful to see you know, people being reunited after two years of absence from loved ones. And it really reminded why airlines exist and why travel is so important to people. Um, prior to that, we saw the VTL to Kuala Lumpur uh, totally oversubscribed. We simply couldn't put big enough aircraft on the route. Uh, so I, I do see Malaysia, Australia, um, Philippines is doing well. Uh, with Jeddah now being VTL, I think we'll see a, a lot of traffic coming there. But I think we're all waiting for the reopening of, of Indonesia, of China, of Japan, uh, mm. which is going to be quite significant because that's a big footprint for Scoot. Well, it's interesting, Campbell, that you say you was on the flight with the passengers because one of the fascinating things that I took away from that seminar you did with other representatives of the travel industry was, uh, I wouldn't say there was disagreement, but there was a healthy discussion on what a traveler's priorities are right now. For some, it's security. For some, it's a, a smoothness of tech and testing and so on. And some, it's cost. In your experience, and you was on that flight last week, as we move into the endemic phase, what has become the average Singaporean traveler's priority? I think it's connecting with friends and family that they've not seen for quite some time. Uh, you know, we, we don't see, you know, Scoop prides itself on being an affordable, you know, cheap airline uh, with respect to price, but we we're not seeing that. We're seeing people just desperate to go and visit loved ones and, and, and see people again. Um, yeah. you know, with respect to the, the, the process of travel, people are obviously a little bit uh, worried about the extra steps that they perceive that are in the process, the showing of your vaccination certificate and, and perhaps getting a, a permission to arrive in the, the other country. But those things, once you actually do it, you realize they're not quite as difficult as you imagine. And so as more people do it and get familiar with the process, when you talk to other people that have been through the process and found it quite not so burdensome, uh, I think travel will spin up quite quickly. But clearly, the, the emotion that was on display on arrival um, just underscored why people are traveling at the moment and, and people mm. uh, will, will jump through hoops to do it, it seems. And are you seeing a difference in terms of an emphasis on insurance? I mean, I'm looking at booking flights for myself in the UK shortly, and I'm looking at things I would never look at before, you know, cancellation procedures, sure, yeah. uh, date changes. Uh, are these priorities for passengers now? Do you see people, I don't know, investing more in insurance and looking at cancellation fees or potential fees and things like that? 
Well, certainly insurance is uh, something that people are more interested in, particularly insurance, obviously, that has COVID cancellation cover, mm. uh, which is now widely available, including from us. Mm. And in many uh, cases, but, it's mandatory, right? By, yes. By various governments, you have to have it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but clearly, a, a key consideration for people is booking flexibility. You know, in, mm. in past years, pre-pandemic, people would book six to nine months ahead of actually traveling in, in some cases. Uh, we just we don't know what the world is going to look like in six to nine months. So people are leaving their booking decisions quite close to travel, and and to encourage people to take even that chance, airlines including Scoot are giving people the ability to make destination changes or, or free date changes, uh, to give people the assurance that yes you can commit, but if there's something that changes in the regulatory environment or, or permissions for travel, uh, you're not mm. stuck. You can shift. Um, we've also, throughout the pandemic, we've refunded we people, whether to vouchers or cash. Um, so you know, it's important to give that sense of trust to people that they can take the step in booking and, and start traveling again, uh, even yeah. in what is still a bit of a volatile market. Mm -hmm. uh, Campbell, a couple of, of comments coming in on Facebook Live. Uh, Rohit Bale says his five-year-old son loves the yellow scoot colors, the carbon fiber 787 Dreamliners with the quote-unquote shark engine, as he calls it, so the, the cutouts uh, at the at the back side of the engine. Uh, also, Mike Ang on pre-COVID, he said he used to fly scoot and Air Asia, but Air Asia's food he feels was better after they did a tie-up with um, Grab Food. When you talk about customer experience, are you over the time of the pandemic, did did you have time to rethink any of the uh, of the offerings on board uh, for customers? Is that staying pretty much the same as it was before? Food, obviously, is a thing that we're all interested in and concerned, in, especially on the longer haul flights. Uh, any thoughts on those issues? Yeah, interesting to have that comment because we acknowledged it was an area that we needed to get better in. Uh, and so during the pandemic, we did two things specifically related to that. The first was for the, the meal itself. We've rolled out about 12 new meal options, including ones that come in a, a bento box. So if you've flown Singapore oh. Airlines uh, short haul recently, you'll, you'll notice there's a cardboard sort of bento box. We have laksa, we have um, uh, carrot cake, uh, we have congee, uh, which is, you know, it, it, we're trying to champion local favorites. And mm. the quality is, is amazing. Um, it's available, available for pre-purchase, not something you can uh, buy on board just because of the complexity of delivering it. But it's really a step change improvement in, in what we were offering before. Interesting. Um, in terms of ordering, we've actually rolled out a, a wireless onboard system whereby you can interact with crew electronically to place your order, to buy duty free. And that was triggered uh, for two reasons. One, it was a regulatory requirement that during the pandemic crew couldn't interact with passengers in the way they used to. So we wanted to, to maintain some uh, physical distance. But secondly, it puts more power in the customer's hands that they don't need to push the call button, wait for crew. They can browse and select um, at their own leisure with their own device. So these are, are two areas that we put some investment into the in-flight product during the pandemic, partly uh, to improve the experience, but also partly to, to meet uh, the, the, the pandemic requirements. On that point, Campbell, you know, the traditional view was budget airlines great for short haul flights, food optional, doesn't really matter. It's only a two, three, four hour flight. But what I'm seeing with Scoot, and you mentioned this at the seminar, is that some of your longer haul flights are proving extremely popular. Mm. I mean, what, what, how do you account for this trend? It's fascinating to me. But two, two reasons. Uh, much of Southeast Asia and Australia, Australia has been closed for the past 18 months, two years. Uh, and so it was the Europe and North American routes that were opening up earlier. And so as much as we thought that short haul leisure travel would be the first to recover, it just turned out that because of these artificial constraints, it was long haul travel that recovered earlier. So we were able to reinstate our Athens flight, our Berlin flight, and we launched a brand new Singapore, Bangkok, London Gatwick flight during the pandemic, wow. uh, which all proved quite popular because that was the markets that were open and where people were able to go. Um, and of course, you know, we, to serve those markets, we have the, the 787 Dreamliner and being a wide body aircraft with you know, a premium economy type product on board as well. Uh, it, hmm. It's a bit atypical for your, your low cost airline, but Scoot is not a typical low cost airline. You know, we, we try and do things a bit differently and uh, do things better. So it's a, it's a Singapore, Bangkok, London flight. Is that correct? Or is it direct That's to correct. London? That's correct. Wow. Well, I might take Airlines. that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I might take that. I didn't know it existed. Group. Yeah. Yeah. Singapore Airlines obviously flies Singapore, London nonstop, and, and that's going to be mm. a, a preference for a lot of people. But uh, we thought we'd take the opportunity to exploit what we saw as a gap in the market between the UK and Thailand, both markets being quite open to travel, 
uh, yeah. and give uh, people in the UK an opportunity to have a tropical holiday in Thailand during winter and uh, nice. for other people to explore the UK during the northern summer. Yeah, I'm talking to Campbell Wilson, the CEO of Scoot, and I just got to follow up with that comment on food from Mike Ang. He's just recommented awesome, great local food on Scoot. Uh, so there you go. The positive changes are already filtering down within among, seconds uh, <laughs> among Thanks, our man. listeners here on, uh, on the Saturday mornings. Uh, Campbell, for a uh, question about your staff, how are they? How have they been holding up during the pandemic? Fortunately, we have not seen too many flight rage cases as we've seen in the West. Uh, North America and Europe haven't seen quite as many, you know, quite quite as much of that here in Asia. But how have your staff been holding up? And uh, there has been there have been challenges with uh, the uh, labor shortages and things like that that have been uh, throughout Asia. Um, how how are you guys uh, positioned with those issues? Well, our staff have been amazing. Whether it's you know pilots that haven't been flying as much as they used to, cabin crew who likewise haven't been flying as much, or ground staff. Um, yeah, everyone has really been drawn together, and and despite the challenges the industry has faced, I, I, I'm just, I couldn't speak highly enough. I'm so proud of them. Hmm. Um, but as we move into recovery, there's a lot of hiring to do. Uh, yes. Typically, we would have around 1,500 cabin crew uh, through attrition uh, and secondary employment. We're down to about 800. So we, we need to recruit nearly 800 more cabin crew during the course of this year. Um, which is you know, fundamental to the ramp up, not just of Scoot, but of the, the Singapore Air Hub. Uh, yeah. And so that's that's going to be a big area of focus. Um, but with the rest of the organization, you know, we've spent a lot of time uh, re-architecting some of the core of what we do, you know, new systems, new, new processes, new methodologies to make the business stronger in preparation for this recovery. And, and people have done a great job. And uh, I'm hoping that this year we'll be able to bear the fruits not just from a business perspective, but also from a, a work life and job enjoyment and fulfillment perspective mm. for all of them. Mm. Well, that was a key takeaway from your seminar that I took, Campbell, was that labor shortage part. I do think has got lost a little bit in the narrative. You know, we've all focused on the com consumer and rightly so, you know, the consumers can't travel, but now we're moving out. I think you made the point. Now we're moving into the endemic phase yourself at Scoot and others need to recruit staff really quickly, don't yeah. you, to meet yeah. demands? Absolutely. Look, and, and our cabin crew cohort in particular has been uh, strongly Singaporean core, and, th and that will remain, and it's important to us as well as it is for the nation. But you know, we serve people from all around the world, from different cultures, with different languages, and we need to recruit people from not just from Singapore. Uh, and, and so you know, we, we are facing a bit of a constraint. Uh, the labor pool in Singapore is tight. Um, and, and so, yes, 800 cabin crew in the space of uh, less than 12 months is going to be a, a challenge, wow. <laughs> but wow. necessary for recovery. Well, it's good news for folks that are looking for work and that may want to uh, try the uh, the uh, travel industry. So uh, um, where can uh, folks find out more, in fact, about some of those job opportunities yeah. or or whatever? I, I assume your Scoot website. What's, what's the URL for that? Uh, flyscoot.com. Uh, so if you've got uh, great personality, good with people, uh, safety mindset, uh, want to have some fun. You know, it, it, it's been tough for the last couple of years for cabin crew with all the safety protocols that have been in place, yeah. but I'm, I'm quite sure that over the course of the next few months, those will lift. And uh, you know, there's no better job for being able to travel the world, have fun with friends and get paid while doing it. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Thanks so much for your time today. Campbell Wilson, the CEO of Scoot. Hope you'll come back and talk to us as the uh, uh, flights open up and, and more places are easier to get to. But thanks for being with us today on Money FM. Thanks very much, Edwin. All the best. Thanks, Campbell. Thanks.